Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Tree and Sea, number 14. I'm not really sure if I've done 14 of these, but I probably have. I just did one this morning, not this one, so I won't talk much about it because I know that's, uh, uh, you know, not going to be that interesting to you. But um, this one was really a challenge, but I'm, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. And um, what was the big challenge was, okay, uh, with my trees, I'm very picky. I want a certain flow to the trunk, if you haven't noticed. Um, the one I was doing today had like, way too many curves in it so I totally simplified it yeah. something you know not far away from some some sort of s type of shape but uh, as far as branches coming forward or branches going backward my preference is to sort of flatten things out but I wasn't able to do that on this tree and uh, you're seeing me work it out um, struggle a bit with it and by struggle I mean struggle in the the positive sense of the word. I don't think there's a exclusively positive word uh, for uh, struggle, but when I when I say struggle, I, I usually mean. Actually, it's not always positive, but this was a positive struggle because you know, come on, we're making art. Anyway, I ended up having to reconcile with the fact that the only thing was going to work was going to be having a uh, a tree limb loop around, and so that's what I did, and I made my peace with it, and I was I was happy with that. Uh, this kind of scene, you know, uh, like I said, I was doing something very similar this morning, uh, only that was a vertical, same size though, six by eight. And I have, uh, I have, you know, a gallery that's uh, doing very well with this kind of thing. And I, I'll be honest with you, I find it uh, a unique and interesting challenge always, you know. Uh, the fact that I have to deal with that serpentine trunk means... Uh, and if you, if you go too, too whatever, you know, <laughs> I mean, if you go too clean or too too many uh, whiplashy art nouveau kind of things that doesn't work if it's too rough it doesn't work if there's I'll tell you one thing uh, uh, these these particular types of trees out here in New Zealand they have lots and lots of branches but you'll notice I always simplify simplify things a lot uh, in the old days I used to add some of those thinner branches but uh, I, I really treasure the open spaces that I've left around the trees. It's very much a part of creating the dynamic. And that's uh, what I'm into with the trees. You can see there's a tension and release in the tree. It's almost like it's uh, spring loaded. And uh, that's uh, also you can feel there's lines of force going different directions, you know. Um, and of course, that's all balanced off of the tension that's inherent in the horizon line itself. Now, I'm trying this one. I'm I'm playing the diagonal of the shore with the tension of the tree off of the horizon line. I think that's working well. I would have um, what I did. So there was a, a potential for some problems. You can see it here in the drawing, where uh, the the ocean part all the way off to our left hand side there's some little like potential cul-de-sacs there and the way that i dealt with those was just having them darker in value so that wouldn't be an area uh that you would be lingering and it's good to remember in your own painting that the lightest brightest thing will attract the most attention especially when the lightest and brightest thing is set up against a dark thing that's always going to create interest and that uh, should be where your focal point is now in a painting like this also you know your darkest your darkest shapes in the landscape are always the vertical shapes against the sky or against other parts of the landscape um, remember that when you're when you're painting because you may be looking at your if you're actually looking at your photographic reference remember photos really lie about things um, they tend to flatten things out. They have a, a, a far more limited value range. What, what, what? What's that? What's I'll that? pick up in one minute because we got to talk about the book. Do you have the book? Because it's in 
it's an amazingly high demand, you know. It's uh, a one-of-a-kind item, and I will ship it to you for sixty dollars. Uh, with international shipping included and that ha contains vast amount of uh, painting information that I've collected over the years and uh, it'll be signed it'll be numbered and it'll be in your hands also I should point out at this juncture I, I, I often forget uh, this painting in, in its full-length form uh, will be in the members area it's already uh, in the members area and uh, that's real time so as I'm painting it in the studio now it's not like every second is teach 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 you know that's not how um, life works but there's a lot of good teaching that does go on a lot of insight and the thing is it's very valuable because it's real time yeah it's really happening that's 4k no ads uh, six bucks a month and uh, Google gets a big chunk of that but uh, we love Google Google makes all this possible and thank you for that Google thank you for hosting my videos I really appreciate it yeah and I do okay so I worked that tree out and I'm real happy with that and that's what the drawing portion of the painting is for get those challenges worked out and uh, one thing I was talking about to people this morning as I was painting you would have heard if you were a member and when you you will hear when that video makes it onto the channel and um, I was saying, well, okay, you know, I tend to, uh, I vary certain things. I might vary the board color. Yeah, you know, maybe I'm painting on our board or maybe I'm painting on uh, something that's been done by house paint or, uh, you know, uh, it could be any, any number of different, uh, but you know I'm doing an underpainting and I might change the color of the underpainting color, but I'm going to do an underpainting first then I'm going to do the sky and then I'm going to do the darks and the landscape and then I'm basically going to paint my way towards the lights of the sky with the lights of the landscape and I do that for every painting now some I was you know hypothesizing uh, as I was painting this morning well maybe uh, you know uh, uh, some some artists might change that up but uh, I really don't feel a need because that's not something I need to change I'm already um, chock-a-block with just dealing with the challenges of making an attractive landscape and that's after you know thousands of landscape paintings under my belt I'm still challenged I still found this definitely a challenge and uh, you know I think I succeeded have I done better ones yeah probably you know but is this one credible am I ha uh, proud of it and happy to uh, show it to you definitely so that's that's you know why one of the reasons why I chose landscape painting um, was in my 40s when I did is I'm thinking okay well yeah I got what 20 30 years of life who knows you know um, we don't know that's kind of beside the point the point is that I wanted to take on something that I thought would be infinitely challenging and landscape painting is that I don't care how many landscape paintings you've done uh, it's going to present constantly new challenges even with the same subject matter similar colors you name it so I think it's helpful to have an approach uh, very similar to if you were going to go to battle I mean you would scout out the terrain uh, you would amass your troops and your supplies etc you know you wouldn't try and change things up unnecessarily yeah and I don't uh, I have a certain procedure that I follow and I recommend you come up with your own I mean mine makes a lot of sense to to me uh, you might uh, start with that and then modify it but once you find an approach that works um, you know you can stick to it like some people like the blocking approach what which should be like big shapes and then they come in and, and do more rendering and drawing and things like that well, that's a perfectly valid approach and I've utilized it myself for me though uh, my mindset is that of a uh, drawer and I want that drawing to be sound also I've tried tools and aids like um, very, I've talked about this on the channel before very early on 
I uh, thought it would be a great idea to use a, a projector to project photos uh, onto the boards and, and trace out the images and then just paint that up. And that made really, really bad paintings. I mean, you can't do that. It doesn't work. I know firsthand because uh, it took me a while to really figure out how bad those paintings were and why. So your own honest attempt at breaking things down uh, as a drawing slash underpainting is going to be way more attractive than the photo um, transferred uh, onto the canvas and just painted directly. It won't work. It might work in some, there are cases it could work. I'll be honest with you, but if, if that is the case, you already are dealing with a photo that, you know, is succeeding as a work of art. So, um, and uh, if, if there's a few live um, sessions on the channel of me uh, putting reference together and there's a, quite a few more in the members area and uh, the, some of those are an hour you might see me messing around with an image for an hour and uh, you could ask yourself well why spend all that time if you're going to paint it well I just got to make it uh, uh, I got to uh, make it as good and strong a reference as I can so that it feeds the painting, so the painting's going to be better. Because it's all about the painting. It's all about getting it done, getting it closed, and having it look good. Yeah, you see me uh, addressing that area there, and we're going to be coming into a much lighter uh, sort of aqua. And I was quite pleased with the uh, the tones in this um, uh, ocean. You know, uh, I can't uh, resist. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the things I absolutely love about doing these sorts of scenes is the uh, the fact that, you know, you almost never find a, a, a reason to get in any kind of aqua otherwise, you know. It's very seldom uh, that you have aqua in a landscape unless it is the ocean, to be honest. I mean, you might find maybe a lake scene where you could work it out. I like to play... I'll just tell you, since you're not, you know, a lot of you aren't members and wouldn't know um, that you're not seeing those color mixing sessions. But my my way of mixing aqua is like uh, I use either these days I'm using either Persian blue or Thalo blue, and yeah, they're pretty much interchangeable to me. Um, Thalo is a little stronger, but they both work great for what I do. Um, so one approach to aqua is quite a lot of blue, and then say some cadmium yellow, and then some white, right? and varying amounts of blue or yellow to get different shades. But another approach is to use the, uh, the blue, like a Prussian blue, and uh, yellow ochre, which is a nice aqua as well with a different feel. So I'll use that for some parts of the ocean and the other uh, aqua for other parts of the ocean. And uh, of course, you know, for the, the color of the waves, there's usually a lot more cream in there than you might think. And uh, I, I think the uh, the waves in this one actually really make it because the, having that balance of the light, uh, white, foamy water in our lower right hand um, adds a certain amount of balance to the painting that was really needed. There's a lot of tension in this uh, in this painting, and uh, it was certainly exacerbated by the twisty uh, tree trunks, right? Um, at the end of the day, though, I think, uh, and you know, this isn't uh, that, um, you, you can find the trees growing right on the beach here uh, in New Zealand just like this. So these, uh, these Pahutakawas, they, they love the beach, and I don't know how they deal with the salt water and all that, but uh, you know, what do I know? Anyway, I uh, sincerely hope that you enjoyed watching me put this together. I am not going live uh, this week, and I think... Next time I do go live, I might make it like like a Wednesday or something instead. Um, yeah, because, uh, I don't know. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what we do. Um, it will be, I think, the uh, the Photoshop stuff is a great, is a great way to go live. But, uh, um, yeah, I do plan on doing more of that. So uh, definitely let me know in the comments or or uh, drop me an email or whatever and give me your opinion about that. that? And uh, I'd love to hear from people. In fact, I would love a comment on this video. If you uh, are one of these lurkers that just likes to watch all the videos and uh, uh, then you're just like me. <laughs> uh, but honestly, you know, um, if you can, you know, just leave me a thumbs up or a like. Okay, I'll take it. Why not? 
Anyway, until I come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment, do me a favor, do me a solid, take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble. Then God bless you and your family. Fight the power.